Okay, let's uh, let's do another example. And we've been doing some problems where we, we find sort of a discrete difference. I'm going to look at a case where we have a magnetic field that's varying continuously with time. So, for example, if I just have a... Um, let me just do something like this. If we have a magnetic field in some region pointing out of the plane of the board, and similar sort of thing. Let's just say it, the magnetic field is confined to this circular region, kind of like a solenoid if there's only magnetic field within the solenoid. Everywhere else, B is equal to zero. Okay, outside of this radius. Let's say this is a radius R. So outside R, B is equal to zero. Inside, let's say the magnitude of the magnetic field is given by a function. An explicit, a function that has an explicit relationship with time. So it's increasing as T squared. So T is time. K is just a constant. So let's say k is equal to 2 times 10 to the minus 3 tesla per second squared. Okay, so, it, so for example, at t equals 0, b is equal to 0. Right? At t equals 1 second, uh, b would be equal to 2 times 10 to the minus 3 tesla, and, and so on. Okay, t equals 2 seconds, it would be uh, 4 times that, 8 times 10 to the minus uh, 3, 10 to the minus 3 tesla. So just, it's just increasing as a quadratic, basically increasing as with a square of time. And we want to find, similar sort of thing, find the EMF in the loop of radius R. And then we could also find ENC. Okay. Well, now in this case, uh, you want to be careful because in the previous cases, we were given two different discrete values of magnetic field or, or magnetic flux at particular times, and they were very close apart. In this case, I'm given the magnetic field as a function of time. EMF is equal to the negative of the derivative of the magnetic flux. What could I just do? Take the derivative, right? And I can say that the EMF is equal to negative DDT. Um, and by the way, let's just look at the magnitude and we'll get the direction later. So I'm not going to worry about the sign yet. EMF is going to be equal to negative, or excuse me, uh, derivative with respect to time of the magnetic flux. This is a uniform magnetic field over this circular area. So that's just going to be B times A for my flux. We have the time derivative of this function of mag for magnetic field, k to t squared, and the area is pi r squared. The area doesn't depend, it doesn't depend on time. k doesn't depend on time. So the only thing that we have here is t squared that depends on time. So I have k pi r squared, and derivative t squared is just 2t. Okay. And now that's giving me the EMF as a function of time. So there's a case where the EMF is going to be changing with time. If the magnetic field is changing as T squared, the EMF is then changing as T. So the, the, the larger, the longer I wait, the bigger the EMF is going to be. I could evaluate it at some specific point in time. Let's say at T equal to 3.0 seconds. Okay. So I can just plug it in once I've calculated it and say that this is uh, 2 times 10 to the minus 3 times pi times a radius. What's the radius? Uh, let's make the radius uh, 10 centimeters. So this is 0 0.1 meters. 0 0.1 squared times 2 times 3 seconds, which gives you something. What's that work out to be? Anybody get a number? 
3 minus 3 pi, 0 0.1 squared times 6, so that's 12. 1.77 e to the negative 4, okay. 3, negative 3. 1.77 times 10 to the minus 3 volts, 3.77 times 10 to the minus 4, okay, gotcha. 3.77 times 10 to the minus 4, and the units are volts for EMF. And then if we wanted to find the electric field, again, just based on the symmetry, we would assume that the electric field, again, is pointing in sort of this curly pattern, uniform everywhere. And so, again, we have a circular path. We can say that this is just going to be ENC times 2 pi r, and you can, you can solve for the electric field. Okay? But the point is that when you're dealing with a, a situation like this where you have an explicit function or a magnetic field explicitly depending on time, don't plug in the numbers right away, okay? Take the, you want to take the derivative first. If I, now if I take the derivative, or if I, one common mistake is to say that, okay, I want to find this at time equals 3. I can plug in B at T equals 3, and then I'd have uh, 2 times 10 to the minus 3 times 9. Okay, t squared, and so that is going to be 18 times 10 to the minus 3. And then I can say, okay, well, then it's going to be that times pi r squared, and that's my EMF. Well, that's telling you the EM, or that's telling you the flux at that particular instant in time. It's not telling you how the flux is changing with time. And the difference is basically the difference between instantaneous and average quantities, okay, when you're talking about changes. So, for example, if you have a position, back to sort of physics one type things, if you have a position as a function of time and it's changing like a parabola, if it, it's something like kt squared, where k is, has something as the acceleration, or one half at squared, to make it more familiar. Well, if you calculate the position here and try to find the velocity by taking the difference between this point and the starting point, in other words, finding that slope, what did you just find? That's, that's the average velocity, right? So this, is, this slope would be V average as delta X over delta T, where your average is going from 0 to T final here. It's not going to be a very good approximation to the instantaneous velocity, right? What's the instantaneous velocity at that point? How we, graphically, what do you do? It's the tangent, right? It's the tangent. So it's the slope of the tangent. That's dx dt, okay? Same sort of thing here. You have to figure out the derivative first to get the instantaneous rate of change of uh, the flux and then plug in the time you're interested in to find the EMF. Okay, so don't try to calculate. If you're given a situation like this where you know the uh, function, uh, just be careful about how you calculate the, uh, the EMF. Okay? Questions here?